Not as long as there's at least two prophetic voices speaking. We will not lose. Have you ever noticed something in the book of Revelation when the, when the Antichrist is actually on the earth in power? that he's seeking to rule and run over the whole world, run roughshod over everything, and two prophets are his obstacle. Two. You don't read but, a, but about two that are his obstacle. Every time the position of the Antichrist arises, and tries to push itself into the world, God raises up prophets, men and women of God, to stand. And this time it was, it shows you the prophets, the office of the prophet was so spotlighted because it was the Antichrist regime actually in a position to push their way in. If there had been no prophets brought up, no prophets called forth by the Lord to speak. It would have happened beyond its time, before it should have happened. You say, well, God won't allow it to do it. My friends, God didn't make you get saved. You only got saved when you got ready to. He called your old ugly self for years and you wouldn't show up. He called me for years. I wouldn't turn around. So don't tell me God will just make you do something because he will not. Hell, I wish God would just make old, old Trump walk back in. He ain't going to make anybody do anything. He presents opportunity and we respond in obedience. He would say, well, you know, God is, God is saving all these people. Well, in actuality, no. Oh, that's something that will upend everything on the, uh, on the chat and everywhere else. God's not actually saving anybody. God has already saved. People are receiving salvation as we preach it. Every time somebody gets saved, God didn't, Jesus didn't go to the cross and die. He did that already. He's already provided salvation. It has to be received. Does that make sense? The scripture says don't call into the heavens and say who will bring Christ down from above or who will bring him up again from beneath. He said the word is nigh you even in your heart and in your mouth. And so he said, if you believe in your heart, God raised Jesus from the dead, confess with your mouth, you'll be saved. He's already completed salvation. It's just not being received by everyone. But it is his will that it is. But he won't force it on you. And if allowed to continue, if there wasn't any voices speaking, if it was just allowed to go on with with jackals, swines, and weasels, if it's just allowed to go on that way, then soon the lines between the freedom of illusion and, the free, and, and uh, uh, between illusion of freedom and slavery will be erased, and slavery will replace freedom. Now, I know people say, well, Brother Robin, you know, you just, you just get too radical. You just get too wild. Yes, here is the thing, not too wild, just wild. Now, here is the thing, illusion of freedom, I'm going to say this again, to have an illusion of something or a sleight of hand, a sleight of hand is when you see a magician do something and you say, well, did you see that? No, you didn't. You saw what he wanted you to see. Because he got your attention with some other thing and he did something right in front of you and you never saw it. That's called sleight of hand. Your attention is focused here while they do something here. See, the U.S. is a government of two shoulders. 
The government of God is one shoulder, Jesus. But the government of the U.S. is on two shoulders. You have a left shoulder and a right shoulder. Now, you have a right hand and a left hand. And so what you're looking at is the oldest tricks in the book. It's called sleight of hand. Remember when I told you a long time ago I heard the Lord, and the Lord revealed this to me. He said they're going to trade Roe v. Wade for gun control. I told that and told that and told that, and people just looked at me. They didn't, they, they, I don't know how many heard what I said. I said they're going to do it. And the Lord even gave a warning to the Republican Party that they better not. Y'all remember that? I know the 11th hour team does. said they better not do it. God was going to give us the overturning of Roe v. Wade without trading that freedom. He don't like backroom deals like that. So he wants to bring you out with a mighty hand. Everybody awake today, huh? All right. Here is the thing. So sleight of hand has to have two hands to work with like that or some way to get your attention on one thing while they do something else. So the Republican Party, for the most part, is the illusion. The sleight of hand is done by using the donkey party. Oh, the donkey ass party is using the right party as their sleight of hand. In other words, they give you this to look at. Oh, we're fighting. We're fighting for you. We're fighting for you. And you say, yes, yes. And you start dropping your ballots in for them. Boom, 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 boom. We're fighting. Oh, yes, they're fighting for us. The party of the red fighting for us. And the whole time, only about eight of them were. The rest of them were in a backroom deal trading the donkeys. Oh, yeah, trading the asses for your freedom. Well, Brother Robin, you, 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 are, you, are, you are cursing like a sailor on television every time. No, I decided to call them what the Bible said they are. So, you can't go wrong speaking the word. And so here you have it. That they're in the back room deal trading. Uh, I tell you what, because they're all on the same team. They can't be pulling off these, these things they're doing if they wasn't all on the same page. Do you really think they could pull off such power moves without both parties in agreement? There is no way. There is no way they would let these, these, uh, these jackasses trample the Constitution of the United States and just openly trample it until we watched one, one witch, one, listen, one drunk witch sat on television and while the, the rightful president was giving a speech in front of the world, tore his speech in half and ripped that document up. And you think she could get away with that without all of the, the, the illusionist on the right hand allowing her to? Drunk with power. Just manipulating everything. They showed you what they could do. That fiasco in D.C. that took place. Biggest show on earth. I mean, when you got cameras, people opening doors, telling them, come in, come in, come in, come in. And, it, and you think that wasn't staged? Oh, come on, man. I might have been born near a tub, but I wasn't born under it. And so you have to have an illusion of freedom to keep the people in check. So in the backroom deal, they said, look, we've got to, we've got to, uh, we've got to control. Uh, we've got to have control of the people. And the party of the red, the majority of them said, yes, we do. So what we will do is let's do an illusion trick with them. Let's, uh, 
uh, you give, uh, we'll give you Roe v. Wade. That'll make everybody, uh, oh, they'll be so excited. They'll never see on the same day we'll pass red flag laws to see who can have, who can actually own firearms. But it's amazing, isn't it, that the same day Roe v. Wade came out in big letters, little tiny letters under it said they gave red flag laws to the Democrats. Now whoever is in power deems you red flagged, you can't own a firearm in this country. They can come get it. Think about it. It never was about, gun. oh, they're going to take the guns. Oh, they're going to take the ammo. Oh, they're going to take, no. The devil, he, he's not looking for control of a pen. He wants control of the person holding it. It was always about controlling people, not things. And so they have this illusion, and sure enough, they traded it, didn't they? Already in this coming up in this mid turn already in this time in the middle of the creek in the middle of the Delaware in the middle of the thing already in this time it's already been decided in a backroom deal that that the donkey asses will keep the Senate and these will will keep the house something to that effect you watch it's already decided now See somebody say, yeah, but they're not going to oh, they're not going to do it. Because they'd never try that again. Really. They have to because they can't win. They can't win if they don't do it again. You know what? Watch this. I'm going to speak in code. It may be too late. They may already cut me off. I don't know. But you see that pen? Right, now let's just say this for a moment. This is a very good pen. It writes absolutely amazing. Okay, and I keep good pens, really good pens. Now, th this is, okay, watch, because I write a lot. Now, watch this. And I write on coated paper, coated paper. Now, now, watch this. And I start to, let's just say I was holding a pen that something was wrong with it. And every time I wrote something down and handed it in, Somehow or another, it changed what I wrote, and it changed inside the pen. The pen was something coming out of that. Something about that pen changed that, and I never saw it. It just always changed it. Every time you, every time, or let's, or let's put it this way. Every time I put an ink cartridge in here, it turns from blue to red. Every time. Well, until I do something about the pen, it's never going to stop. People say, oh, they, they ain't going to never do it. They're not going to do it again this time. They'll never do it again this time. Okay, I want to show you something. Look over at, at, at Daniel. I've got to talk in extreme code now because these people would say, I hate you. Okay, look at Daniel 7. And I want you to, to see this. Let's see now where I want to be. Uh, okay, let's look at Daniel 7.25. We'll start there. Now, I've got a talking code right here, and, and, and this is why, because of where we are in the middle of the creek. They are out for blood. And he shall speak. Uh, great words against the Most High shall wear out the saints of the Most High and think to change times and laws, and they shall be given into his hand until a time and times and dividing of time, but the judgment shall uh, but but the judgment shall sit and they shall take away his dominion. Do you see that word? Did anybody read that word with me? Shall take away his, everybody on chat say it, shall take away his, okay, do you see that? All right, now that is what, if that don't change in the machine, they don't have to do anything. It's doing it for them inside 
that word inside that machine. So people say, oh, they'd never dare try that again. They don't have to try it again. It's already in until you change those things. It's automatically going to do it. So you need to get that in your mind. And they've already traded it in the back. That's why uh, Mitch McConnell said, it looks like we're not going to be able to, to maintain the Senate. Really? Nobody else knew that, Mitch. <laughs> nobody else knew that. Everybody knew we, that everybody hated the donkey asses. Everybody knew that. They knew good and well that the jackal couldn't hold power anymore. They, everybody was already settled. We can't lose this time, but you just told us we probably would. How did you know that, Mitch? You know what? I might have been born. You know, I, I was born in the daytime, but not yesterday. Now, I'm going to tell you something. So we have to, we have to begin to, to understand that if it's allowed, I said allowed to continue, then soon they will play their illusion hand. They do this all the time. It's a sleight of hand. Why do you think they always do what they want to? How come people like, uh, how come people like Clintons and uh, uh, Pelosi's and how come they're not in prison? Have you ever asked yourself that? Why are they not in prison? How come this don't happen? It's because it's sleight of hand. Well, we can't do anything. Really, nobody knew that, Mitch. And so you've got seven or eight in the red that's fighting with everything they got. But everybody else is on the same page. And if it's allowed to go on soon, soon, the illusion will just kind of go away. And slavery will take its place. And they will have what they wanted. An openly party ruled nation. Now, I want to give you these few prophetic words that the Lord has had given me. And um, I had actually been writing so much I had forgotten these and all of this was the other day I hear the name Nordstrom I heard that name Nordstrom now when I tell you I hear the name I'm not sure what it's for I'm just telling you what he said write down and say so I hear the name Nordstrom now whatever that pertains to you keep your eyes and prophetic ears open for that. I heard Franco-American. I guess that would, I know that referred to at one time what a, a, a French and American alliance, but I heard Franco-American. And then right after that, when the Lord starts talking and he's just talking and it's in the night and you're just hearing him talk, talk, then I heard the name Sue, and I heard the name Bobby Sue. Now, whoever that is, the Lord has all of this on his mind right now. People are, are and, and things are, that you're hearing are on his mind right now. Then I heard the name Annette, and then I heard the name Roper, Roper. And I, I wasn't all real sure about the way I said that. I even put a question mark by it in the dark here. Roper. And then there's something about, a, about Liz Cheney. Now, her name is being tossed about in the spirit world right now. Her name is being thrown around in the spirit world. So something is up with her. And these spirits... And usually when I hear something like that, these are demonic type things speaking through people. 
And I remember one time I heard in a back room, I, I saw a man with kind of a balding head talking to another man, and I heard them say, I heard the conversation where they said, uh, let's, what are we going to do this time? What do we do now? And they said, let's, let's give them Carey, John Carey. He said, he's no good for anything anymore. Let's just throw him out there. And it wasn't two weeks, a little over two weeks, maybe three, three weeks that he was, they were really talking about bringing him up on charges for discussing Israel's secrets with Iran. And that was the leader of Iran. And I heard them talking. Well, I hear the name Liz Cheney being thrown around in the spirit now. Something's up. Something's up. You better beware. When the demons you work with start throwing your name around, they're getting ready to do something with you. Jesus would be your only answer. Now, I heard Ford, like the automobile, Ford, yes. I heard Ford right now. Watch it. Then I heard the name Japan and laborer. Japan and laborer. After I heard those names. And then I heard this name, and I don't even have a clue if I'm saying this right. It was a Montsuel. Montsuel or a Monsuel something. I heard that. Somebody could correct me if they know what I'm talking about. And then I heard this phrase, misinformed, misinformed. I heard this word, partridge. And then I heard Leonard. And I heard two sons. Now, if any of these words and names mean anything to you, you know, it's been a long time since I've done that just stood on the air and started saying names and things. But if they mean anything to you, God has you on his mind right now. He has all of this on his mind, and he's revealed secrets that are hidden in the dark. And he's talked about things today. That's a bold statement to do. I was walking around my house last night, and the Lord took me to, because you get to thinking about, you know, uh, Lord, you know all these things that are going on? I want to show you something that will that will give you the courage to speak. Put up Deuteronomy 31 and verse 6. I want you to take this verse to heart and really put it in you and speak it out of your mouth anytime you sense any fear at all about speaking out. Listen to what it says. He says, be strong and of a good courage. Fear not, nor be afraid of them. For the Lord thy God, he it is that doth go with thee. He will not fail thee nor forsake thee. Did you hear that? He said, be not afraid of them. Them. Do you know who them are? It's the same ones they say they are planning this. They are doing that. They are going to do this. He said, be not afraid of them. Be strong and of a good courage. He said, for the Lord your God, he it is that doth go with thee. He will not fail thee nor forsake thee. And man, that come up in me when I quoted that last night, walking around my yard. And I said, Lord, you tell me what you want to say. That'll make you even be bolder still. Amen. But one thing's for sure. If God's people don't start talking, and don't start talking for righteousness. And listen to me. There is no box marked right that you can put the killing of unborn children in. There is no box marked right to set that in. I don't care what any other issue is. That one up there is enough. There is no box marked right to stick that in. Remember that. Hallelujah. 